Great. Thanks, Anand. We really pre appreciate you sharing this. Hopefully others can learn from it and um, maybe give them some ideas or food for thought on things that they can do to improve their own VTE rate. Sure. Um, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, without uh, further ado, as I said before, um, next we will welcome Yoshino Sakimoto from Children's University, Children's, um, who will present on a collaborative approach to improving organization-wide safety culture. Yoshino, let's begin. Awesome, thanks, Gail. Again, my name is Yoshino Sakamoto. I'm a patient safety consultant at Children's National Hospital. And I'm here to share with you a project that my team and I worked on around improving organization-wide safety culture. Next slide, please. So here are some facts and stats before we get started. Um, Children's National is a 323 bed freestanding pediatric hospital with a level one trauma center. Next slide. All right, so as you all are aware, safety culture surveys really provide a valuable insight into how the workforce perceives safety culture within their teams and then across the organization. And this is why assessing safety culture is an established priority for many healthcare organizations that strive for high reliability. Um, there's been a lot of work done around the relationship between culture and outcomes. Positive relationships can be made between strong safety culture and patient outcomes, such as length of stay, readmissions, and adverse events. And then similar correlations have also been made with employee outcomes as well. So overall, culture isn't just about preventing safety events, but it really permeates everything we do within an organization and then contributes to our overall performance in, in really every aspect. However, here's the challenge that, um, that we, we encountered. Um, we all experience competing priorities and limited resources, which makes it extremely difficult to dive deeper and, and utilize safety culture survey results in a meaningful way to drive culture change. Now keep in mind, culture change definitely is not a sprint. It's more like a marathon. And so we need to find a way to support these teams in the long run. So with this problem in mind, the patient safety team at Children's National launched Safety Culture Improvement Partners, or SCIP, um, to test a collaborative approach, which sought to tailor improvements to the unique safety culture needs of these organizational teams. Next slide, please. And so here are our objectives. They were one, to create a framework for a programmatic and collaborative approach to improving culture, identify pilot skip teams, and then develop and implement department specific action plans. Next slide. So one of the SCIP framework that was created really leverages existing resources and aligns patient safety and quality improvement methodologies with frontline expertise for a more collaborative approach to strengthen safety culture. So the framework consists of these phases and it's basically a big PDSA cycle. Um, and then next slide, if you can just click through the images. Um, patient safety consultants worked with SCIP teams to identify areas for improvement for improvement, um, incorporate existing operational priorities, and then walk through this framework by providing tools and support for facilitated feedback sessions, um, process mapping, and then observations to create individualized action plans, as you can see here. Um, continued support is then provided to SCIP teams through structured check-ins, outcomes tracking, and then resources for continuous improvement. Next slide. Um, if you can click through, yep, thank you. Awesome. Um, so as mentioned in the beginning, we really embrace the principles of high reliability and something we take pride in is collaboration, not only with leaders, but also with the frontline staff who do the work every day. Um, we've been able to use their expertise to guide and move this culture improvement work forward. And as you can see here, um, 20 plus um, department leaders and 80 plus frontline staff were involved in developing action plans. Next slide. So I wanted to share with you some specific outcomes from teams within our organization. Um, since the inception of SCIP, 
the EEG team, they've hired a lead technologist to streamline their scheduling process and proactively address staff discrepancies, staffing discrepancies. Um, they've also developed a daily huddle board to enhance timely communication. And what we did was we conducted a pulse check survey and we found that they've had a 16% improvement in staff feeling like they have better work support from their team and leaders. The endocrinology dis, uh, department, they decided to focus on key um, processes. They wanted to improve around patients receiving insulin pumps, glucose monitors, and growth hormone treatments. And so by mapping out current state, understanding and addressing the barriers, they've experienced a 44% increase in their teamwork climate, specifically around physicians and nurses, feeling like they're working better together as a well-coordinated team. And then lastly, transport medicine, they've been focusing on how to improve stress recognition among their team, especially considering the nature of their work. Um, so they developed a virtual stress calendar that they are currently trialing with the team uh, with the purpose of promoting situational awareness and psychological safety, um, furthering meaningful acknowledgement by their leaders who utilize the stress recognition data. And it also serves as a way for self-reflection for the staff. Next slide. And then to wrap up with final thoughts and lessons learned. Um, let's see, so teams across the organization, they really face their own unique challenges when it comes to safety culture. And the SKIP framework that was created was meant to take this into account and not be something that was a one size fits all approach. So having unit specific safety culture survey results um, definitely gave us a good jumping off point on where some areas of focus could be. And then in all of this, local leadership support has been critical really in staff engagement and then carrying out the action plans. And our next step is to share these best practices across the organization. Um, COVID unfortunately did impact our work with some of the teams, especially areas such as lab who was hit pretty hard. However, the relationships that we've now built um, through this initiative have grown into something bigger than just support for the safety culture improvement work. So that's something big that we've taken, taken away from SKIP. Um, and then finally, I'll end by saying culture change is possible. We, we've seen it through this, um, but it happens when leaders and, and resources, um, really leaders are engaged and resources are aligned. Um, so with that, I will take any questions. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Yoshino. It's really interesting and, and such a good point about culture change being more long-term, not, not you know, a quick sprint. Um, I think it's something that you've got to constantly work on. Um, so that I think that was an interesting point. Um, and uh, so I, I guess I have a question a little bit because you mentioned leadership and line level staff. How do you balance um, letting line level staff bring ideas forward um, while collecting hospital data, considering accreditation and licensing requirements and, and other means by which you would identify projects that might be worked on? How do you balance sort of empowerment yeah. Yeah, so initially what we did was we reached out to the local leaders to give them a high level overview of, you know, what the initiative is and, and the goals. And they gave us a bit of a direction, I would say. Um, but ultimately, we also incorporated frontline um, staff feedback as well through the, the feedback sessions that we conducted so that, you know, there's they also have some say in the projects that um, that come out of this. And so it was a, definitely a balance between the two, I would say. Right. Has that helped with uh, buy-in from the staff in terms of, um, I mean, culture change is, is about engagement and buy-in and empowerment. Has that helped that the way that you approach that? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, staff, they do the work every day. You know, we're deferring to their expertise to, to um, to tell us what needs to be worked on. And so I think if we have, in, you know, these, take these ideas from frontline and be able to implement that, um, the improvements tend to be um, sustained longer too, because they're also engaged, um, you know, they came up with it. And so um, kind of having leaders set the direction, but having staff ultimately come up with some of the solutions has been very helpful. Um, and we did have one more come in. I think we have time for it. Um, can you talk about any um, policy plans or changes um, 
long-term or short-term impacts from COVID. Um, you know, having this in place before potentially <laughs> all of that hit might have been a positive, but um, have there been things with, with what's been happening recently that caused you to, to rethink or even leverage this more potentially? Yeah, I think, I mean, this framework, I think can be applied to other things besides the safety culture work. Um, to, to be honest, we actually just launched our 2020 safety culture survey. And so we're hoping that that would give us um, an understanding because it's been a while um, since we did the previous safety culture survey and definitely with COVID, um, I would suspect a lot of things have changed in terms of work processes and, and how staff are feeling in general. And so um, I think we can definitely use um, some of this framework moving forward to apply to the 2020 results um, where I think we'll show a little bit about how COVID has been impacting um, our staff. That's a, a good Sorry. point about doing the survey now <laughs> and how yeah. staff are feeling about everything that's happened and how it might actually impact the results versus sort of a, if there's such a thing anymore as a normal year, but a normal yeah. year. <laughs> um, thanks so much. This was uh, really fascinating. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, with that, um, we'll next welcome Angela Moore from Howard University Hospital.